we've already looked at void functions that do not return a value, but often we want a function that does return a value. So let's look at this example. I have the math module imported, and then I have two functions, get circumference and main. And then my executable code is just the calling of main at the very bottom. So the main function runs, and the first thing we do is we ask the user to enter the diameter of a circle that's converted from string to a float value and assigned to the variable diameter. Then I have circumference, another variable, equals get circumference, and that's going to be a call to my get circumference method or function, and I'm passing it the value of diameter, which goes into the variable d of that function. And in that function, then, we have a variable called circum. It equals d times math.pi, and we return circum. So circum then is, a is assigned to circumference. And then we simply print the value of circumference. If I left the return statement off in my get circumference method, I would get an error because I'm assigning a value to circumference based on that method. And when you return a method, generally you're going to have that assigned then to a variable or some type of container. Now we can return all kinds of things. We can return variables, we can return literal strings, we can even return things like lists or tuples or dictionaries. For the purpose of this lesson, we'll keep it simple and just return a variable. Here is another example. I've got my main function being called, and in that function, I ask the user to enter an integer, and I convert that to an integer value and assign it to number. And then in the print statement, we're going to print whether that number is even or odd. And notice that here I am actually calling a function from that print statement within the format method. And so I'm going to put in the number in placeholder 0, but even or odd, the return of that from the function called even or odd will go into placeholder 1. And so when I call even or odd and pass it the number, number is going to go into val. And then in that function, if val modulus 2 is equal to 0, I'm going to return even, else I'm going to return odd. And so I wanted to show that you can call a function from within a print statement and in the format uh, string format method. But also I wanted to show that when you have a function that returns a value, you must have a return statement for every terminal fork of that function. So if I left off a return for the if fork or the else fork, I would get an error. It doesn't matter which fork it goes down, it's still going to return a value to the calling statement. Let's go back to our tic-tac-toe game. Previously, we created a void function to print the board after X or O takes their turn. What I want to do now is to change the check for win into a function that returns a value. So I'm going to add another function declaration, def, and we'll call it check for win. I'm not going to pass it any value, but I will have it return a value. So I'm return a Boolean value. So we're going to call check for win. And we'll take the code that I wrote earlier. and we'll paste it within the check for win. I'm going to get rid of this information. We used ternary operators before um, as an alternative. I'm just going to use those. So we're going to dedent. Now I have the variable winner I want to make that a global variable. So I'm reference, I'm going to reference winner as a global. And I need to come down and do the same thing in my while loop. And we'll say global winner. So now I'm free to change the value of winner 
to either an X or O if any of these are true. I have a variable called game over. I'm going to create that as a local variable just simply by specifying game over equals false. I didn't set up game over as a global variable earlier, so it's going to treat it as a local variable anyway. We'll set it equal to false, and then we set it to true if any of these are true. What I want to do then is return game over. And so this local game over is going into this local game over, which is within my program. And let's see if that all worked. So I'm going to put an X in B2. Let's say that O does A2. X will go into A3. O has to counter in C1. And now X goes in for the kill with a C3. And there's two possible ways for X to win. O is going to hope they only see one and does the B3. But unfortunately, X comes in for the win diagonally. And we're told game over, X has won the game. So that's working. The nice thing here is our definition for check for a win is a smaller piece of code that we could actually unit test and make sure this all works for different variations of the board list and see if it makes see if it finds all of these eight different possible ways to win without having to play the entire game. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.